Good morning to you and welcome to our Friday prayers on this lovely spring day in the villages of the Cookhams. Our gospel reading in this first week after Easter comes from John's last chapter and it records how the disciples appear to be lost and bewildered by all that has happened until the risen Jesus appears to them. John writes, After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two of the other disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And they said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat and that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul, haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes for he was naked and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. And this was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. This chapter of John appears very much to be a postscript to his gospel record. It records the announcement by Peter that after all the tumult, the depths of despair and the ultimate joy of resurrection at Easter, that he was going fishing back to his old trade with several of the other disciples. Were they downhearted that Jesus had disappeared and anxious to earn their living once again? We don't know. But this story has all the ingredients of the very best parable. After a whole night on the lake, they catch nothing. Is this also an echo of Jesus's words spoken at the Last Supper, without me, you can do nothing. The huge haul of fish reminds us of God's generosity, recalling the amount of water changed into wine at Cana, the huge baskets of food left over after feeding the crowds in the desert, the abundance of life that the Good Shepherd gives us and the generation of inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And despite the substantial weight of large fish, the net was not broken. The net itself, as elsewhere in the Gospels, is seen as a symbol of the kingdom of God. And thus we have another image of the disciples' future work as fishers of people, a ministry whose success will stem from the power of Jesus imbued in them and in their following of his will, 
his instructions. And of course, the same applies to us today and emphasizes the importance of our acknowledging God's role and influence in our lives and in everything that we do. Amen. And so let us pray. Dear Lord, just as your son encouraged his disciples to become fishers of men, help us to follow his teaching and example in all that we do in life, to be good examples of Christian behaviour and to encourage others to follow you. Amen. And recalling the words of Saint Teresa, let nothing disturb you, let nothing upset you. Everything changes, God alone is unchanging. With patience, all things are possible. And let us remember that whoever has God lacks nothing. God alone is enough. And so, using the words which Jesus taught us, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so, as we close for today, let's say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. And so farewell, farewell for now on this lovely spring day and let's try to demonstrate our love for God and our neighbour in all that we do this very day. Farewell. <laughs>